It's always fun and exciting to get new features on smart devices, but sometimes those features are better than just exciting and they actually change how you interact with not just them, but your family and your friends on a daily basis. And that's what every one of these new features does today. I'm going to start with a basic walkthrough of the new smart display interface for Google Assistant enabled devices. Now I did a full walkthrough. If you want to get all the nitty gritty details and figure out how to truly use the smart display interface, there's a link down below to our tutorials channel. You can go check that out. Otherwise, I'm going to walk you through how some of the new features that are available with this interface because we didn't just get an interface. One of the things that I've been disappointed with and many of you have complained at me and it's stuck somewhere in here because of that is that we can't customize a lot of these smart display interfaces and that actually starts to change today with the ability to dismiss certain cards now what you'll find is most of the cards you can't dismiss when you long press on them but you'll find events and specific things that come up through the day very easy to dismiss and certain components of the display as well the other thing that feels a little custom to me is how I use the device and that actually affects what I get on the first display panel. So when you tap on there or you pull, you swipe right to left, then what you're going to find is a panel that's either for your morning or your evening or your afternoon or it's something related to the time of day. And then what's happening in here is certain cards can be dismissed, but on top of that, you're also able to customize things by what you use on a daily basis. That's what will show up here. And not only have I found the new control interfaces throughout the display to be really useful, including the ability to quickly control my lights in 10% increments, but I've also found it very useful with the new Google Chromecast because there's actually a small navigation or a small control panel. And you're going to find these new control panels are much easier to access access throughout the entire display, not just on things like the shed devices, the smart home entertainment devices, but you're going to find this on cameras and on lighting and across the display in general. I also love the fact that it's a quick tap to really what is the view of my day and you get your calendar and your reminders and maybe even new sources or podcasts, which is an entirely new feature on Google Home in general. So not only do you have it on the displays when you go into the media tab along with music and video and news, but you also have it in the Google Home application and your ability to choose between Google Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts as your default provider or no one, allows you to customize this a little bit further. And one of my favorite benefits of this whole new smart display interface is the inclusion of music and media and the way we can control that. And when I personally go and play music now, it is with a smart display interface in front of me and the ability to add and remove those speakers on the fly, plus the ability to transfer between speakers Honestly, this control method now is one of the most convenient and best platforms on the planet. Now, something that I have found entirely too useful and have started to toy with people on is the ability to communicate really quickly, really effectively with people. And the new communicate tab, not only does it have that new household contacts thing, but it also has the ability for me to start a Google Meet meeting immediately. And on top of that, I can broadcast to a specific room or call a specific room. So I think the calls for the drop-in feature on Google Smart Displays can stop right here because it's a one tap to call a specific room. And quite frankly, I don't want that speaker or smart display to auto answer because I don't need to see people naked. The other thing I really enjoyed, and this is where I started messing with people and actually got messed with back, was to send a video message through Google Duo. And I love this new capability to one tap, send a video message to a contact and what came back within seconds of me doing that is Alan singing Tina Turner back. I, 
I don't know what was going on. One of the hardest things for me is to film a smart display because it's constantly changing from super bright to super dark and back to bright again, but the new dark mode capability is really important for me and I think a lot of you are gonna love it. You also have the ability to set it in light mode or an auto mode which will allow it to adjust based on the ambient room lighting and the time of day and all kinds of things, but just put it in dark mode and let's be done with it. And to me, the discovery tab is a bit of a miss. Now, why I say that is right now, it's not a great discovery process and I like the recipes on there and I like the idea, but it's not really great discoveries that I'm making. And what I wanna see in there over time, and I have a personal belief that this will go on, is some of the assistant actions and the games will show up in there and become a much more useful quick panel for discovering new features and new capabilities. And with the discovery tab being a bit of a miss, there's a couple of other misses in there and the pull down menu is gone and I think that's gonna frustrate a lot of people. And I also found a couple of reboots, but in general, this is a massive leap forward in the smart display interface. And that leads me to the next big leap forward or at least the next big leap forward for me because Honestly, I don't want to have to go and set up a bunch of things in Samsung smart things all the time or in my other systems that I have here. I like the fact that everything's kind of aggregated into the Google Home application and therefore I want to be able to utilize as much as I can that application. Now, what I've been able to do is create some power savings and to create some additional security in my home and then also to prep my home for my arrival. And this new feature is called presence detection and you should find it in your app. You'll get a little notice to set it up and Again, what I have done is when everyone leaves the home, then I set my home into the away mode and I turn off a bunch of smart plugs, create a bunch of power savings, but I also turn on my cameras to make sure they're operating whenever everyone leaves. Now, on top of that, when I return, I kind of set my lighting for my return so that everything's on correctly and I can actually see when I come in the home and then I'm turning off those cameras when I come home and later I use a routine to turn them back on for the evening so I have that monitoring situation all set up and I can even turn on cameras in other systems like Samsung smart things and turn them off as well. Now that's allowed me to avoid smart home hubs in a lot of cases and I like that I'm starting to be able to do that with Google Home but speaking of smart home hubs the Nest Secure system has been discontinued by Google. Now obviously this isn't something that's really exciting or changing your life but it could change your life if you do have that system. So we'll have a full discussion around that but that is now discontinued on the Google Store. You can't buy it, but you can still use it. Now with the removal of the Nest Secure system, we also have the introduction of new things. And I know how you Europeans are always on me about Europe only sort of stuff. So the Audio Pro G10 is pretty close to that. Now there will be an American version, but the pricing is pretty good on what is supposed to be a pretty high quality speaker, a lot like the Audio Pro A10, but with Google Assistant on board. And I love some of their mounting features and some of the control stuff on the top of that. And while I normally buy computers from Acer, I actually find myself looking at a smart speaker from them. And this is a really interesting looking thing. And I think it solves a couple of the things that many of you were looking for in the Nest Audio, which it has a smart display on the front, can give you a little information like the weather. And it has this great light on the bottom that just looks amazing with what I have to assume is not true glass but some kind of plastic there anyways the thing looks amazing and is only ten dollars more than the nest audio so i'm gonna try and get one of those for a review and the last one is something i don't personally enjoy as a device but this one is priced right and many of you did enjoy the original lenovo smart clock well the essential version is now available for sale it just came out this past week so you can go look at that for around that 50 dollars price point now in case you haven't noticed i'm getting a little old and this means that i don't remember everything but one thing i do remember from the google io conference or actually two things i remember is when it booked a haircut which is 
now available in the US for you to do 100%. Now, that's not in every country and Google Duplex is actually now available in eight countries, that doesn't mean all those features are there. One of the features you will start to see is within Google's Chrome browser, and they've been focused on a couple of specific situations, and this happened at another one of the IO conferences. They showed the ability to book a rental car using the Google Assistant to kind of fill out a bunch of things based on what you told the Google Assistant. Now, this is also being done on movie tickets, and there will be other opportunities so when you see the google assistant when you start to fill out a form or you start a purchase process that is google duplex being applied so watch for that showing up as you use it especially on mobile i don't know about you but every time i've tried to use the nest application as of late it really hasn't gone well i've been trying to use it on the google chromecast and quite frankly you can't even get logged in now that's because slowly that Nest app is going away, but something they did put back into the app will help you with your kids have a little more fun around what is likely to be a bit of a different Halloween season here for them. So go and check out the seasonal ringers and you can have a little bit of fun here with your kids pressing the doorbell. Every once in a while I throw in a real businessy thing into this and I'm sure lots of you go, oh, that is so boring, but there's a reason I tell you about these things because they have major impacts in how your smart home goes from this point forward. And you know, Google Assistant showing up on Fitbit soon is as a result of a big deal to purchase Fitbit, which does appear to be going through and will start to show up instead of Miss A on every one of those devices. Now, the other one was the purchase of ADT or a 6.6% stake in ADT by Google that shifted the security market and started the end of the Nest Secure. But this next one is something that I've never felt Google has addressed very well. See, in the app I can turn on purchases and I can look at reservations and I can once in a while with an assistant action try and purchase something, but it's few and far in between. And this is a way that Google is absolutely getting kicked to the curb by a company like Amazon. Now, what they're doing in the background here is preparing YouTube to be a selling site or a seller site. And that would mean that you could watch a review or a video like this and go and buy a bunch of products after that. And I think that's a great move and it would give them a huge leap forward in terms of combating Amazon in the sales space. And that would potentially mean that you'd have the ability on the smart displays as well as your Google Home products to make a number of purchases because Google would have a lot of products that they could now sell. I also happen to think that that new Google Chromecast, the $50 streaming device from Google, is going to be an excellent interface for making purchases like that. And it's already kind of there with the Android Play Store available, but on top of that, I've been noticing since, even since I got the product, that things are changing rapidly on there. And one of the things that I couldn't do on day one was get YouTube music to play while I wasn't inside of that application and the interface wasn't up, but that's, this has actually changed already and you're getting a new interface on the TV as you go and browse for shows, which I really love. And then on top of that, when I go to the settings page or just before that settings page, I get a quick interface for opening and playing and skipping songs as well if I just long hold on that. One of the other things I've noticed since that review is that Bluetooth connectivity is being worked on heavily and this has already improved. So something I said was I couldn't maintain a good Bluetooth connection to a Nest Audio or a speaker pair of those Nest Audios and I still can't really maintain it but I have noticed more and more services have the ability to play content out of Bluetooth sources and Bluetooth headphones are the best scenario. You're gonna get that out of most of the applications, but it's getting better and better with Nest Audio. So stay tuned for more here. I think we're gonna get everything we were hoping for. To me, the Google Chromecast is totally becoming a cornerstone of many modern homes, especially if you have Google products. And that's why I want to showcase it to you in more than just those video streaming services. And that's why what's up on screen right now is our review of that which goes much deeper than just video streaming services and you'll learn how they're really shifting what you can do with a streaming
streaming device with the new Google Chromecast. So go check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everyone. And of course, don't hate, automate.